do you know what the law of love is? The law of love is loving your neighbor as you love yourself. It's a balance. And I really believe that a lot of times in marriage, what happens, what falls apart in marriage, is we don't have a good balance. And setting boundaries is a way to create that balance, self-love. And setting consequences to your boundaries, which is what we're going to talk about today, it's kind of like the second part, um, is really the heart and soul of it. Because if you don't have consequences to your boundaries, you don't have boundaries. So let's talk a little bit about that today. Hey, I am Brett R. Williams, a licensed psychotherapist and the host here at The Gathering. The Gathering of Good People is a nonprofit that's dedicated to helping create support groups that will help you with your emotional healing through personal growth. And I want to continue kind of our second part of what we started with talking about boundaries. I want to talk a little bit about consequences. Hey, and before we get too far into this, before we really get spinning and rolling, can I can I ask you to think about something? We're going to talk about boundaries and consequences today. And I want you to think about adding in your comments here on this video. What are some of your boundaries and consequences? And maybe what even some of your questions are about good boundaries and good consequences. So we can kind of address those basic needs for you. All right. So make some comments down below and let's see if we can give you some answers. So it is really normal. It is a, is a quite almost a daily occurrence that I will get an intake coming in and it's typically a wife who is just burnt out. She's struggling, she's suffering, she is in so much pain and she is done and she just can't do this anymore and wants to come in and talk about, you know, the marriage, but really she wants to talk about divorce because she's so toasted, so burnt out with, with everything that's going on. Now, what I hear in those circumstances, those situations, is that here's a gal who has tried to set boundaries forever, and they just have been broken, 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 broken forever, and she's done. She just can't do it anymore. She's just burnt out, frustrated. Again, no shame or blame about that. That totally makes sense. But here's what's going to happen next. Here's the odd thing that's going to happen next. When she goes home and she says, I'm done. I want a divorce. I can't do this anymore. You're going to see a miracle happen because I see it every day. Every day I see it. She's going to go home. She's going to say, I can't do this anymore. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to change. He's going to stand on his head. He's going to spin circles. He's going to do whatever it takes to keep her around. He's going to set up date nights. He's going to be more attentive. He's going to, you know, whatever she was frustrated about, you know, smoking or drugs or alcohol or infidelities, whatever. It doesn't even matter. Whatever he was not doing before, he'll be doing now. Now, here's the problem. If she waits too long, if she says, I'm done, I'm out of here, and then he starts spinning circles, and then he starts doing whatever it is that she's been asking, um, if she waited too long, it'll be too late. And he'll make all the changes. I guarantee that. He'll make the changes that she's asking for. But she's waited too long, and now it doesn't matter to her. And now, you know, he's going to be the person that she's finally wanted, finally asked for, finally, you know, have been begging for. Now he's doing it and she's just not interested and then she's going to move on. That's the sad truth I see time and time again. And, and what we're seeing happening, playing out in these scenarios is that she is setting consequences. And that is what really is at the heart of boundaries. That's, that's at the really the heart of change is the consequences. And most of the time, either we have zero consequences, no consequences at all for our spouses, or our consequences are nagging, kind of, you know, why didn't you? Why can't you? What's wrong with you? And it's kind of a critical nagging. 
Or the third option is we have this ultimate consequence of divorce. Now, none of those work. Not having consequences at all doesn't work. Having consequences of being critical or nagging doesn't work either. It makes you feel terrible about yourself. And then also having this consequence of a divorce, this ultimate consequence, doesn't work either. Because it's too dramatic. It, it actually will end up hurting you because now you have to go through this divorce and upheave your whole family and life. So what's the better alternative? What's the better choice? Well, the better choice is to set good consequences. Because the bottom line, and I, and I, I know you're going to hate me for saying this, but the bottom line is without consequences, there really is no boundary. And whatever boundary you've set, your spouse isn't responding to because there's no meat in it, no teeth in it. And they basically, frankly, don't have to. Which then makes you, the spouse, I assume, watching, hurt, frustrated, disappointed. Because if they loved you, they would just do it because you said you needed it done. And then it didn't happen. So the, the really easy consequence or the really easy interpretation is that they don't care. They don't love you, which again, may not be the truth. It may be accurate in the sense of they're not doing what they should be doing. True. Um, but interpreting or reading into it or creating the story that they don't love you because that's why they're not doing what they're doing is not that useful and helpful. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing because they don't have to. There's no consequence. Now that sounds like a terrible scenario, again, because we're coming from this mindset of it is hard for women. We talked about this in the first video. It's hard for women particularly to ask for their needs and wants. It just feels selfish. I mean, I can't think of a, a nicer or simpler way to say it. It just feels selfish. If I have to ask for my needs and wants, then, gosh, you're not paying attention. You, you don't really love me in the first place. Well, as we started in the very beginning and shared the law of love, the law of love is that you have to learn to love your neighbor, which I'm going to assume for most people watching this video, that's not hard. Love your neighbor as equal to the way you love yourself. That's the hard part. That's the part that most people don't get. That's the part that people struggle with because we all think about loving ourselves, that second part of the law, as, as selfish. And we don't want to do that. We refuse to do that. We just want to love other people and we just want other people to love us. And, and then it'll all work out. If I love them totally and completely, and then fill all their needs, then they're going to love me totally and completely, and then they're going to fill all my needs. It doesn't, it doesn't happen that way in, the, in life and real world. What we need to do is we need to ask for our needs and wants and set consequences when our needs and wants aren't getting met to, put te to, to create motivation, to, to require, basically, that this has to happen. And again, that's going to rub you wrong. It's going to rub anybody wrong who has trouble loving themselves because that's what we're doing is we're asking you to love you, to make your needs a priority. You want your spouse to make your needs a priority and make them happen, but you don't want to make your needs a priority because you're going to feel selfish. But that's what has to happen. For a boundary to work, for you to get your needs met, you have to have a consequence to it. Now let's talk a little bit about consequences because we always think of consequences as punishments. And that's the other part where we get snagged up on consequences. Well, consequences are not punishments because you're not your partner's parent. Consequences are consequences. Consequences are results. If this happens, this result happens. And it happens in good ways or bad ways. Um, the consequences, the results of being a good spouse is that you develop this good relationship and have 
love and connection, the consequence of being, you know, an absent spouse is you get this disconnect. Everything in life has consequences. Not just you, everything in life. And if I can find a scenario where I don't have consequences, will I follow that scenario? Will I, will I obey those rules? Probably not, because there's no consequence. So how do we set up consequences? Well, again, most of the time, the consequences that we do are either nagging, criticizing, kind of complaining, which sucks for you, or it's divorce, which again, sucks for you because those are just not healthy ways to set boundaries or consequences to our boundaries. Um, a good consequence has a couple things to it. One, I think a good consequence is one that is really clearly defined. It has clear expectations and timelines to it. And two, I think good consequences are more on the lighter side, not the heavier side. Because in a consequence, what I want to show people is that when they do something that's inappropriate or wrong or, or they shouldn't do, um, I don't want to have a consequence that's so severe that they're never going to ever do it again. But I do want to have a consequence that shows them there is a result. There's a result that's going to happen. So let's use some really easy, simple examples. Let's say uh, your spouse has a problem. And maybe their problem is that they're looking at porn. That's a kind of a, in my world, that's a kind of a typical, normal kind of problem. It's really problematic for the spouse. And sometimes, depending on who the spouse is, it's not problematic for them. The guy likes it, the lady doesn't. It, it hurts her feelings. It, it, it feels like a violation of their relationship. So a consequence would be, hey, that hurts my feelings. That makes me feel bad about myself. That's the boundary. The consequence is I need you to sleep in the other room. You need to sleep on the couch. I, I, I can't have you in our wedding bed because it feels like you're not acting like a married man. When you, when you do those things, you look at that porn, mm -mm, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel to me, this is my boundary, right? My boundary. It doesn't feel to me like you are acting in a way that you're committed and married. So I can't have you part of our wedding bed. And so I'm going to ask you not to come to bed, not to sleep in our bed. Now, again, I would set time limits on that because good, healthy boundaries have good, bound, good kind of consequences to them, good uh, definitions to them. That's the word. Um, so first I would say, hey, if it happens, I, I would say, a day. Happens again, I'd say two days. Happens again, I'd say a week. Happens again, I'd say a month. Happens again, I'd say a separation, in-house separation for maybe two months, three months. I would say it happens again, we're going to do a total separation. Again, three months. Go live somewhere else. And then if it keeps happening, it keeps happening, then I would say, yeah, Divorce is appropriate because they're not acting in a way that's married. So let's stop pretending like we're married. Let's talk of divorce. Now, as you can see, those consequences build on each other. It's not just straight divorce, like boom. It's, it's a step that's moving in that right direction. And again, the other thing that I want you to really notice about that example of a good consequence is that the consequences are on me in the sense that um, I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm not saying that you did something wrong. I'm not saying um, there's something you know perverted about you. You have to decide that. You have to decide if pornography is something that bothers you because that's kind of your thing you have to look at. I am clearly stating it bothers me. And I can't tolerate it, and I won't tolerate it. And if you want to keep it, you go ahead and keep it, but you won't be keeping it in this house. And, and so the boundaries are on me, and, and they're about my needs and wants. Now, let's stay with this example, and let's say, for example, what if? 
What if your spouse says no? What if your spouse says, nah, I'm just going to come to bed? Okay, really? Uh, I would be, I would be shocked if they did that, but they could. They, they, they absolutely could. Um, at that point, I would say, okay, I'm going to move. I'm going to go sleep in the other room because I don't want to be around you. And if they continue down that road, then I would say, okay, then I'm going to separate. I can't make them do anything. I hope that they will do what's right, but I can't make them do what's right. So ultimately, where does the consequence fall? It falls on me to implement. If I can't get them to sleep in the other room, then, then I'm going to leave. And maybe, maybe I'm going to go to a nice hotel and jack up a nice hotel bill, a couple hundred bucks a night. Maybe I'm going to take the kids and we're going to go on a weekend vacation together. We're going to go out to some nice resort, get a nice hotel. Kids love pools and hotels. So we're going to get a pool. We're going to get a hotel with a pool in it, right? And we're going to have a nice weekend. That's my consequence. Now, what's my spouse is going to feel like? Is he going to be pissed off? Probably, but that's the point. That's the consequence. He's probably going to be mad when he's left out of the family trip, and two, he has to pay for this hotel bill. Well, yeah, if you would have listened and said, hey, here's my boundary, here's my consequence, and he would have followed the boundary or even followed the consequence of gun slept in the uh, couch or in the other room himself, then he wouldn't have this large hotel bill to pay. Bummer for him. But again, that's not my problem. I have to work on what, what I can control. And I can't control other people. I only can control me. So homework for you. I want you to sit down and I want you to think about boundaries. And I also want you to think about consequences. What, what could you do? What would you do to follow through if the consequences aren't met? And you got to follow through with something that you are in charge of, something that you can ultimately take control of. And you know what? I would love to hear in our comments down below what those boundaries and consequences were so we can all learn from each other. All right? And again, I would hope also to see you on the gathering, thegatheringofgoodpeople.com. And maybe we can all get together and set up a good boundaries group. How would that be? Wouldn't that be cool? Where we could support each other. All right, think about it. Love to see you sometime on the gathering. Again, I'm Brett R. Williams, licensed psychotherapist.